welcome to another episode of Sense and Rant. On last episode, we made sense of um, the topic. What was it called? Do, 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 do. What was the last episode called? We made sense of um, taking up space in a gendered and colored world. On today's episode, we are ranting about microaggression with foreign names. And now we are live. I am Motorayo Adeola, your host, your guide, your favorite podcast girl, Sense and Rant. Today with me, we're ranting about names, microaggression, <laughs> foreign names. Um, I've gone by Mo, I've gone by Momo, I've gone by Ayo, I've gone by Ryo, Motsun, Tsun Tsun. But seriously, somebody still asked me if they could call me M. Like just the letter M. <laughs> No, this stop. is 2020. We're go- um, if I'm <laughs> twisting and rolling my tongue to sound as fake as an American as I can get, you can please roll your tongue to, to pronounce Motoraya. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> ranting with me on this episode, I have Merimu, my beautiful friend. I have Koyin Sola. Koyin, say hi. hi. <laughs> I have Tosin. Hello. And then I have Muji Sola, the crazy uh, one of this crew, but you know, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> so ladies, can you please tell us your full names and what you go by or what you've gone by in the past? Okay, my full name is Oluwa Tosin Lady Jr. I, in my US life, I have only gone by Tosin. In previous lives, I have gone by Tuki. But yeah, I've um, kind of stuck to Tosin since I moved to the US. Ah, okay, so just Tosin, no T or T O or. <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> one of the things is that it's simple enough. I guess, yeah, <laughs> Jack, Jack, those of us with long names, but okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, so I've always, yeah, I, I've just always stuck with Tosin. Okay, okay. Moji. Yeah. So, well, fun fact. So, Muji is actually my middle name. And my first name is Privilege Information. Sorry. You, you, only the IRS and people paying me know that name. <laughs> or if I'm paying you, you end up paying more. If, if it involves money, then you're not because the bank has to. <laughs> but anyway. Um, and the reason I say that is because, or I bring that up. So, I've always gone by Muji growing up to the extent that I thought Muji was my first name and not my middle name. I thought it was switched. So it wasn't actually until I moved to the U.S. I found out that, oh, you know, it was the other way around. And I guess I had been lucky for the most part that no one ever really called me Muji Sala except you're looking for my trouble or something. Like that. <laughs> so, you know, coming to the U.S., it's always been Muji, 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 right? But then obviously it then becomes, okay, it's Mojo. And oh. well, first of all, you know, we all have to do the accent thing. It's not Moji, it's Moji, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Moji. Okay, cool. We've done that. And then it becomes, oh, Mojo. And it's like, it's four letters, two syllables. Uh, four letters, two syllables. Mo, G, right? There's that. Simple. And then I used to work in a hospitality industry. So obviously I have a name tag on. And even with the name tag, I've had letters addressing me as Yogi. Like, I've had Yogi. I've had people assume the J and I are silent and ver- verbally <laughs> confirming, like, yeah, the J and I silent is what I think. And I'm just going to call you more. Cool, fun. So, I think, like, even though it's annoying, sometimes I still kind of consider myself to be lucky because it's like, okay. At least it's just Moji. There are only so many ways you can screw up four letters and two syllables versus someone who is, you know, an Oluapo or something like, yeah. uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> even with those annoyances and frustrations, I still sort of consider myself lucky that the name I've, or the version of my name I've always gone by has always remained. So at least I didn't have the extra pressure of having to shorten it any further. Moji is what people call me at home. Moji is what I go by now. And then now to just remove, which is annoying, the fact that we even have to do this. Oh, my name is Moji, huh? Moji, huh? Okay. Emoji without the E. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> 
that <laughs> they'll get. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> good. Good. Then you're like, oh, and emoji. <laughs> you would have said it. But because it's, you know, coming out of an African, like, if I had said emoji, you wouldn't have a problem understanding. But because yeah. I said emoji, then, bro, anyway. It becomes so heavy. <laughs> yeah. <Maramu. Sorry. laughs> okay. So my name is Meramu Ngazi Chekwendu. And um, I go by Meramu. There is not really a nickname for Meramu. It's just <laughs> Meramu. Um, however, there is, until I was about 10 years old, when I, I got to America when I was about nine. and in Nigeria, I, you know, people call your name. You don't really think about it. Mm-hmm. I got to America. People started calling me Meramu. Okay. Meramu. My family calls me Meramu. So I was confused about what my name was. I didn't know how to pronounce my name. People were saying Meramu. And then I would start saying, hi, my name is Meramu. And my mother would be like, that's not your name. Yeah. <laughs> that's not your name. Yeah. <laughs> Your name is Merimu. <laughs> you know, it's, I've been called Merimu. I've wow. been called, they will find all kinds of different ways to do it. Um, but they have tried to call me Mare. They've called to call, tried to call me Mimi. Um, sometimes they try to call me Mary. That's a whole nother story because that's something that, you know, sometimes if I'm at Starbucks or something and they're like, what's your name? Mary, you know? So yeah. sometimes you have to do that weird American throwaway. Um, in college, people started calling me Moo because my name is M-E-R-E-M-U. Mm. People started calling me Moo, Moo Moo. Um, and that one I kind of was okay with because it was like a term of endearment. Um, but then from Moo and Moo Moo, it kind of went to Mo. Sometimes people would call me Mo, mm. which is so... <laughs> yeah, completely off. Yeah, so I had to just... Uh, and, you know, it takes a while because, you know, what's your name, Mary? What's your, oh, just call me Mary. But I had to, it took a while for me to actually, you know, when I was in fourth grade, I came home and I was like, mommy, mommy, you know, they don't know how to pronounce my name. So they just want to call me Mary. And my mom had to stop and be like, that is not your name. Once again, <laughs> <laughs> once again, let me tell you your name, you know, so I had, she had to make me stop that. But then, you know, we can have this conversation, but it changes. It changes. As I've gotten older and I've had kids, sometimes, you know, you're not sure with the kids' parents, what to say. Sometimes I might say Mary, even though I hate that name, I might have to say to the kids' parents. Sometimes I'll say Mary to somebody that I think I will never see again in my life. And I think I don't care. And then I end up seeing that person every single week. So now all of a sudden you're married to them. And now all of a sudden I'm married to them. And now I don't even know if they know my real name. So (laughs) yes, it's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah, it is a journey. It is a journey. Yeah, coin. All right, so me, my story is not that big, but my full name is Olua Kwainsala. But I'll throw in a little bit there just so you know how much my parents love me. Olua Kwainsala, Yanura, Ainke, Daudu. So we decided to give me three names, not one, English. Three nice, beautiful, long Yoruba names. So therefore, I went about my life, I got to America, and then that's when my my dilemma really started. So mm-hmm. I've gone by KY. That was self-inflicted. <laughs> um, I've that gone by Kia. That was also self-inflicted, but it's the coin seller Ian where I in case so technically my initials, which mm. back in Nigeria I always felt cool until I became Kia Motos. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have gone by Kony. Kony. Kony 2012, because someone thought it was funny. <laughs> um, I've gone by Quinsala, I've gone by D, I've gone by Katie, I've gone by Dr. Bro, D. back up, back up, back up, back up to Katie. Don't Walk us through. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've gone by uh, Dr. D, um, <laughs> I've gone by Doc, and I think, I think that's most of all I can remember. But I will say, though, a lot of my nicknames have been self-inflicted. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> a lot okay. of them have been me trying so desperately to fit in. Um, yeah. mm. So 
I got here when I was 15. And back in Nigeria, that Kia one was just me feeling cool with myself. Because you know when you watch GS TV, all those American kids have like nice funky names. And there was a Mia and a Tia. I don't know if anybody watched that like movie where there was mm-hmm. a Tia and a Mia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like a Kia. Until no. QC girls decided, you're not that cool. You're Kia <laughs> But I embraced Kia because my dad put it on all my like birthday cards. It was like my nick. Like I liked it. So it didn't matter what anybody else said. And then when I got to college here, I went to community college first. So that was fine because we're all immigrants. So it didn't really, everybody just called me Coastal and Community College, right? Okay. I got to a four-year college. <laughs> Shit got real. It got real, <laughs> real. Because then I joined all this extracurricular activity. I was trying to like, live my life and everything. I mean, that quest to just fit in at this university, I was like, I have to come up with a name because it's like the nod, right? Like people see you, they see your name or they ask you your name and they're like, cool. it's a beautiful name but a beautiful name that never gets pronounced right Mm -hmm. and then you see this person that you've met before down the street and like you're so excited because you feel like you just made a friend because you guys like really clicked that time we met right and they just give you the nod and I walk right past. And you're like, what the heck did I do? I thought we had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you remember how to pronounce your name. So they decided to like avoid an awkward moment. And they just like right. go right past. That had happened to me so many times. And I was like, I just want new friends. Shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> and honestly, what's wrong with the little hair girl? You know? Just but look. I joined this, this mm-hmm. student group. And I decided there's a K in my name. There's a Y in my name. I was 15 years old, though, in my defense. Actually, you know, that's a lie. I wasn't. So that's four years. I was like 17 and a half years old. And I said, my nickname's going to be KY. That can't be hard. Come on. That can not be hard. Well, it had been that's a whole hard. semester. I had introduced myself to everybody as KY until I, I forgot to tell you. Uh, the group was a peer health advocate class. So we went around camp. And we educated people on healthy living states, including healthy sexual behaviors. So yeah. when I step in front of the class and I introduce myself as KY, uh, <laughs> that was my first real, I'm done with nicknames. <laughs> yeah. It was great. In front of like a whole bunch of horny college students. Yeah, yeah that oh. was great. And then fast forward, <laughs> I became Coney. And I was like, it's okay. Coney is like the first part of my name. So people can call me Coney. And then somebody decided it was time for me to be Coney 2012. And I was like, well... I really don't want to be that. So Coney went out the window and Katie was kind of like this desperate attempt. That was also self-inflicted. It was a desperate attempt. And I was like, I'm going to be Katie. But then no one really knew it was me because it, I spelt it as K-A-Y-D-E-E. Oh, and, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's been, oh, Quinsala, that one's everybody. I don't understand where they see the Q from. Like the Q <laughs> or my name. I just never understood that. And yeah. that's really what people, I say coin solo and they're like coin solo. Um, mad school, I really didn't care anymore because if you like, pronounce my name. If you like, don't pronounce my name. If you want to get to know me, you know me. If you don't, you don't. So in med school, I was kind of like, meh. But the fun thing that I did over time was, I remember in med school, I would write my name on every board every time I walked into mm-hmm. a class. And I'll write how to spell it phonetically just by chance that I was called upon in class. I didn't want to have to go through that awkwardness of like, we spend the first 40 seconds of that calling on me in class, figuring out how to say my name. So I'll just be like, behind you, sir. That's how you say it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that worked for four years of med school. So then my life now as an adult, behind every badge that I own, any hospital that I go to, anywhere that I work, I have these little tapes that I've made, like sticky tapes, name labels. And I write how to say my name phonetically and I stick it to the back of my badge. And as I introduce myself, I turn it around. I'm like, this is your chance. You can't say it. So I become very passive aggressive with it. And but there's a story, there's a reason why which you've heard now. So that's right, that's how right. I live with my name now, passive aggression. Yeah. Which is such an an interesting yet unfortunate thing that we have to do, right? Because when you think of obviously Nigerian names, right? African names carry Okay, sorry. I feel like I may be jumping the gun here. Moto, feel free to no, 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 cut go me ahead, off. Because it's like, you know, when right you think of our names, right? It's, mm-hmm. All of our names carry meaning. Our names are prophecies. Our names are our identities. It goes beyond, oh, an identifier. It's yeah. really telling a story about who you are, your lineage, your family, all kinds of things. So, for example, I mean, going with, with your example, Chris, a lot of having multiple names, 
with the rest of my names, if I can share. If I okay, my name my name is my name is Olua Twain for Ola, Ola Tokumbo. So now you have an idea of where I was born. Yeah. Um, Alaba. So now you have an idea that there are twins in my family and where I fall under, mm-hmm. and the minimum of how many kids there are in my family, you know, that kind of thing. So if I had gone with any of those names, you know, people butchering them, it's an attack on who we are, right? It's an attack on our identities. It's an attack on our families who gave us those names, which again, going into naming ceremonies, like we are deliberate. We wait seven days or however many days to yeah, name seven. children. And, I think it's seven you know, for female, oh. eight for male, but evil mm-hmm. culture is actually three months. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just learned yeah. that as well. So, you know, you go through all of this work and all of this time to pick out a name only for somebody to then be flippant about it, which, you know, going back to Colin's last point, it's enough to drop somebody insane and for you to then start becoming passive aggressive about, no, this is who I am. I'm giving you literally every single opportunity to get it right. And you're just bent on not doing that. It's, it's fucked up. That's just what it is. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's funny because just, just a little aside, uh, I have my cousin, his name is Emeka Nameka, and he's very funny. He's um, a doctor. So when he was doing his residency and every time anybody mispronounced his name, he would stop and he would look at them very serious. And he would say, if you mispronounce my name, you are disrespecting me and you're mm. disrespecting all of my ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> And these are all like white people in like rural Texas. And they would just, oh, oh, no. oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And he would get cracked off. And he'd be like, yes, that's, don't disrespect my ancestors. Like, and he would just go to the corner. So, nice. I so should have used that, fun actually. With Yes, he just realized that these people are going to butcher it anyway. So let me just play a prank on them. Let yeah. me just have some fun. Oh <laughs> my God, that is amazing. Um, so Koyi and, and Miriam was shared when our ship became a thin worth their names, right? Moji, can you remember? Yeah, Moji, you have this soft, easy name. Emoji, just take out the E. Um, but Tosin, if you can share like your first memory <laughs> yeah. of when our ship was attached to your name. I think for me, it would be like people looking at a paper. And then look it up at me like, um, like they wouldn't even try it. Or just like, uh, you feel like also the only black person there, you know, they just know that, yep, it's ma'am, it's your turn. You know, when did hardship become attached to your name that you can't remember? I feel like that is something that I struggle more with my last name, which is actually like very, very silly because I feel like it is equally easy. It is le di ju, three syllables. And then, so what happens is that I find that people won't even attempt it. Like, they are like, I'm not even going to touch it. Like, it is tossing and that is it. Like, they're not even going to touch the lady ju at all. And it's like, just try, you know, or if, even if you, if you, Say you, you don't know how to then ask. Like, I feel like you sort of erode the person's, the person's identity when you like refuse to pronounce their name. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. You pronounce everyone's last name, then you get to my own and you're just like toasting. Like, what's up? Like, what's up with that? So, I mean, I feel like that is something that I've always done with in corporate America. Like, my current workplace, I can tell you that 100%, not one time. Not one time has anybody attempted to say Lady June, which is just mind blowing to me. That I mean, it is, it's just what it is like, just make an attempt. So, I mean, that's definitely something that I feel like I continue to struggle with. Is just like people won't even try. Like, what if the Olua was even in front of the toasting? <laughs> 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 that would be another, you know, yeah. you're like mind blown. Like, that would just be another story. Like, it's already simple enough. Like, it's three syllables. Like, it's just L-E-D-I-J-U. Like, how hard can that be? Like, I'm, I, I try to, like, think about, like, why wouldn't they even try? Right. And, I, I mean, it's, like, there are not that many ways you can screw it up. Like, there really isn't that many ways. <laughs> so, it's like, why wouldn't you just make an attempt? Yeah. So, I think yeah. a, a lot of it really is not caring. And I know, you know, someone who is not Nigerian or African or whatever, who would watch us would 
go, uh, oh, you know, I just don't want to mess it up. No, that's a lie. Mm-hmm. If if you were afraid of messing it up, you would just say, hey, I'm probably going to mess it up. Please correct me if I do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just don't care. Yeah. Because when you see faces that look like this or when you hear accents that sound like this, you know, you, the, 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 the unconscious or very conscious bias is, meh not important. I can just assign my identity upon you, which is, you know, where the added microaggression comes from, where, you know, like Marimu said, oh, your name is now Mo. I'm just going to call you Mo. Says who? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your name is Jessica. I'm just going to call you Steve now because I feel (laughs) like it because I don't feel like saying Jessica. I don't feel like saying however many syllables. I like the one syllable, Steve. That's what I'm going to call you. So me saying that, it sounds absurd, but somehow it's cute and funny and quirky when you say it to an, a foreign name or a foreign yeah. sounding name, which again, it's only foreign to you. It's not foreign to me. Yeah. So That's something we also... Foreign, foreign to me. You know what I'm saying? All these names are not foreign to me. Yeah. yeah. They're foreign to you. So you're the one with the issue, not me. So I think very very something about the whole foreign thing. Do you know the funny thing is like I hinted that my name was Tosin when I was in Nigeria because it was like everybody was Tosin. And like, <laughs> like if someone said Tosin, I, I wouldn't even bother turning around because it's like, yeah, there's probably like 20 other Tosins here. And now now that I moved to the US, now I love Tosin. Because all of a sudden, all of a sudden Tosin, Tosin has a baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think so, it has terrible. anyone ever so when um you know Moto was talking about like names and stuff, the very interesting thing that I found with my name was the way people addressed me, whether masculine or feminine. I almost always get masculine. And it's a really mm-hmm. right, it's a really interesting thing that as Again, when I was in a hostile industry, obviously my name is on a million and one databases. So when people are trying to send, you know, solicitations or whatever it is, they don't know who you are. They just want to, you know, get you X, Y, Z. Mr. Mojakinde. Mr. Mojakinde. Almost yes. always. And it doesn't, it, it, it didn't bother me at first, but then there are some days where it's like, but Why I'm not just Mr. say good morning, Moji, or good afternoon, Moji? It's that audacity, right, of assigning something to me that you do not know about and not taking the time to think, hmm, what if I'm messing this up, right? And just, you you know the name is foreign, obviously. We've established that. So since the name is foreign, why not take your time to ensure that you're being accurate in the way that you're naming me? Because... For example, especially now, you don't know what my uh, uh, pronouns are. What right. really, you know, mm-hmm. yes, I may be feminine appearing, but my pronouns are he, him, you know. <laughs> yeah. Or the other way, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. Or just taking the extra 10 seconds for a Google, a quick Google search. I'm pretty sure if it's not my name that comes up, a couple other emojis will come up and you'll see that they're feminine. Then you'll make an educated guess. Or just completely live it out altogether. So it's that idea of, you know, imposing, giving yourself the the God complex, right? Of assigning a name to you, assigning a nickname, assigning a gender, assigning a pronoun to you. And that's the that's that microaggression that really bothers me. Like, who who are you? Who asked you? Who yeah. made you God? You know. Yeah. And that's the perfect word. It is an absolute microaggression. It is an absolute microaggression to do that to people. You know, it is just, and like you said, it is very, because I think if, if Americans see a name that is a long name, but it looks like it might be European, let's say it's a long name, but it looks like it could be Italian. They will react very different than a long name that looks like it could be African. Yep. Exactly. You know, with the Italian name, there will be Oh, well, you know, this is interesting. Like, what is this name? It's mm-hmm. so beautiful. Exactly. How do you pronounce it? Mm-hmm. With a name that looks anywhere near African. It is just this throwaway. It is just this. Oh, oh. Unimportant, <laughs> uninterested, you know, oh, one of you people. It doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just no interest. And it is such 
it is such a microaggression and it's so rooted in American, you know, racism and imperialism. Just the idea that those are shithole countries and we don't even care about them. But, oh, you're, you're, you've got an interesting European name. Well, tell me more about that. You know, mm-hmm. and it's just so connected to this whole history of just <laughs> all this crap that we've done dealing with in America, but it's, it's an absolute microaggression. No, I have yeah. a, another view of this, right? So I think you, you guys have a great point with um, how people think of our names sometimes and think of them as just this too much work. I don't want to get into it. But on the, at the same time, I've experienced when people think of like, see, either they see my name on paper or they hear me say my name and they're like, oh my gosh, where's that from? That's such a pretty name. And it just takes away like the first minute of that encounter. And I swear, I hate that minute. Because I'm like, one, the best way I can think of it is either when I go into a patient's room or I'm like in front of a group of like maybe students or even now, like if I'm talking to like Marines or whatever, it's so distracting. I'm like, I came here with a purpose and now I have to allocate <laughs> another 60 seconds of my life trying to explain to you where my name is from. And I get that, but like at the same time, I don't. Like, I right. really don't want to have to do this. Right. So in a way, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate where like, I don't necessarily appreciate the people who take that second. Like sometimes I kind of just want to move past this and just right. take my, you don't have to say my name, but I've also become very resistant. Now where I'm like, you really don't like, no one really has to say my name. Like if I'm an important presence enough, you take, you make an effort and you don't have to make an effort with my time. Like you can do it on your own time. You can come and find me later. You can write it down. Like we can talk about this later, but during like actual official time, I just want to move past it. And I just don't like how much of a hiccup it is so many right. times when, somebody encounters you for the first time where you have to go over this name debacle. So a lot of times I honestly become okay with people calling me whatever they want. And I'm like, you know, if I recognize that it's me you're calling, I will respond. But I always say, if they ask me, is that that okay? I'm like, you know, honestly, if you call me something that I don't recognize, I won't respond. That's when you know that I don't, I don't know it's me you're calling. It's not because I'm mean, because you know me, like if you get to know me, you know that most of the time I'm not like a, you know, a rude person. So if I don't respond to you, it's because I, I really don't know it's me you're calling. Right. Because but, let me let me ask you guys a, a, an interesting question, right? So people asking you where is your name from or how is it pronounced within the 30 seconds, 60 seconds, first time of meeting you, could that also be an educating seconds for them? You know, um, at what, what point do you think learning or you educating them or I, don't, I, I guess I'm not phrasing this right, but do you guys get what I'm, what I'm trying to say? Like, I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I it's get what you're like, saying. Yeah. Like, education is great, but mm-hmm. it's like, after you do it like the one millionth time, like, you don't want to do it right. every single time. So while, while the interest is great, it's exhausting yeah. having to explain yourself a million at one time. So you just want to, you just want to avoid it. It's like, that's my name. Let's just move on to the next thing. Like, right. what's yeah. on there? Uh, and it's also that, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, Con- Con- made a really great point. I don't even think it's so much of uh, you were playing devil's advocate. Your point was very valid because that extra time that's being dedicated, you know, again, go- the same thing with Tosin said, is um, um, exacerbating the otherness. Of who you are and the otherness mm-hmm. of your name. You know what I'm saying? So it's yep. like, even if you heard a foreign name you've never heard before, a Polish name, whatever, you would, oh, maybe stumble for like the first five seconds to say it and you would move on. Right. And that's it, right? <clears throat> whatever, next. But with the African names, it then becomes oh, so exotic. It's tell me more. Sensationalize that for me. Tell me how you're different, you know, and all of that stuff. Now it, it, it then becomes, you know, this this show, this parade, or whatever, and it's uh, 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 bringing that otherness of who you are to the table. That yes, I am different. It is obvious. Like I say this in a lot of rooms I come into. I'm fully aware I'm different. You look at me, you know I'm not, you know, from here. You, the first couple of words, you know, I'm from somewhere else. Like my name, everything. Yes, let's normalize that otherness. I think mm-hmm. that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. The normalization of yeah, her name is different. So what, right? I've gotten. I um, I'm going to learn it, 
and it takes five seconds to learn that name and I'm going to move on. Now, if you're really interested in African culture or something or whatever, actually find a way to develop a relationship with that person and then you will learn as opposed to putting that person on the spot and expecting mm-hmm. them to just press play. Tell yeah. me all about yourself. Tell me all about your Africanness and your, you know, exoticness and all that stuff. So it's like, where, you know, how, how do you, the, the, that thin line between, oh, I'm just trying to learn and are you really just wanting the other person to perform for you? And you know, the other thing that I would say is that even though like my name is simple enough to say, I am experiencing this more because now I have a child named Modupe and you know that that P is a strong P. He's actually like a KP. <laughs> oh my god she's so cute what is her name and then i'm like and then i I find they need to explain that Mm. the name thankful for god's grace Mm -hmm. and then like and then now i'm asking myself like what am i even explaining Mm -hmm. what am i explaining but i find myself doing that so much it's like just finding myself having to explain and even to her trying to teach her a name because she has an accent and she says monome. And then I'm trying to tell her like, <laughs> Modukwe. She knows it's Modukwe, but then I don't know. She gets lazy and she says monome. <laughs> and you know, you're having to explain that to her. You're trying to explain also to her teachers, explain to her, uh, her classmates. And it's like, it's just so exhausting. And like, there's a new dimension to me because I told myself like, I don't care. I'm going to give my child a Nigerian name. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm going to pronounce that name because it's my identity, is her identity. Like I'm going to give her, she's going to go by her Nigerian name. But gosh, like it's it's I I I totally get it when people change their name because it can be so exhausting. Yeah, yeah. It's so you you yeah. said something about always having to explain, you know, the meaning behind your name, the meaning of your name. Is that also some sort of apology? you know, on your end saying, mm. sorry, your tongue cannot pronounce this every name that my parents gave me, or I'm so sorry, I'm inconvenient to you. But hey, here is a little explanation to help you um, understand that even though it's it's a foreign name to you, it means something that you can understand if I explain it to you. Yeah, you know what? I think it's probably it's probably some of that. And I think it's also some of like, trying to avoid the awkwardness of you know trying to avoid that awkwardness and like oh it's modupe. oh and it means thankful for god's grace so we've moved on from that and it's like a coping mechanism which is bad but like it's almost like a coping mechanism so that you don't ask me to say this name like five five more times okay, <laughs> you know okay. just segue from it it's and by the way, it means thank you for God's grace. So how are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Anybody have um, anybody else has um, a point or an add-on to that? So we were talking about, well, I'm just going to take us back a little bit. So mm-hmm. we were talking about kind of um, when we start names and people use that as kind of like a cultural outlook, right? I, I think of that as many ways, like, where I come from, the, the, the point of view that I come from now is trying to understand where these other people are coming from. And I feel like with a lot of the racial climates of our community and our society these days, like I'm always trying to see where the other person is coming from, just so maybe I can justify the actions just a little bit. I've been doing that with my name, yeah, for a few, for a while now. And I'm always like, you know, I've seen some tough names in my life. And let me not lie, I've done the nod for some people too. You know, there's some Russian names that like I see and I'm like, yo, I'm not even going to like start. Like I'm not even going to try. So I get it. I get it when you see coins. I'm like, when I sign my notes now, it says Daudu Consola Yanura. They don't have space, so they have to take out the INK out of it, right? <laughs> so like, I can understand how somebody put my name on their charts and be like, yo, what's going on, right? This is a lot of characters. Because I see some names and I'm like, I'm like, I can't even do this. So I try to see from their point of view, but never once in my life have I gone, where's your name from? That's the part that I don't understand. You know, never once in my life, and I don't know if it's because I'm not inquisitive or like I really don't care about other people's cultures because like, yo, Nigerian culture is plenty enough for me. I'm not finished understanding it. <laughs> right. I want to look for me to be crossing, going across a, a different continent to try and understand their culture. Maybe that's why, I don't know. But I've never been so like distracted by a person's name that I, all I'm focused on is their name and not the actual person in front of me. 
that's the part that I can't seem to connect, honestly. So the way I approach it is, it is not my job to train you on being Nigerian. It is not my job to culturalize you to what it's like to be Nigerian. Now, if I feel good, maybe I'll try. It's like, now I probably yeah. won't. Yeah. Um, it's, I, just, I just don't think it's my responsibility. Now, mm-hmm. somebody can ask, yeah. where are they supposed to get that knowledge from? I don't know. Do they Google. really know? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't Google. I honestly don't know. Like, you can yeah. Google it, but like, how many times, Moji, how many times have you seen a name that you're not familiar with that you go to Google it? Me, I don't do it though. But the thing is, going back to, to if you're really interested, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's another, you know, counter argument that people try to make like, oh, but I'm just trying to get to know you. How else will I know? You can find out because guess what? We know about the Aztecs, right? We know about his other historical cultures that do not exist. Well, not like they don't exist, but not as much as in abundance. We can go back centuries in history to learn about how the Roman times and Greek mythology and everything. The same way they were able to go back to years where we were not. For goodness sakes, the Bible exists, doesn't it? Right? So if you really are interested, if it's coming from a place of, I'm really interested in your culture, you can find it out. So I agree with your point that it's not really my responsibility. If I show you and I teach you, that is a privilege that you get from getting to build a relationship with me. It is not my responsibility to play whenever you feel like, oh, this exact second is when I feel like learning about African names. I'm not obligated to teach you anything about African names right now. If you really want to know, develop a relationship with me, okay? Invite me over for wine. Look for my weak spots. Pay for a whole steak dinner. Maybe my name might come up, you know what I'm saying? And we can actually have the conversation. But going back to your point about what is the intent behind it, you know? And part of the reason you're also not seeing a foreign name and automatically thinking, oh, I wonder where this is from. It's because you're not really othering them. You see it, you acknowledge it, and you move on. You acknowledge it that it's different, and you move on. It's not a sensation. It's not this huge event, which it shouldn't be. We know our names mean something to us, but it's not something that we should be like, you know, trucking and jiving and 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 demonstrating because but somebody doesn't. Yeah. Yes, we're going to play devil's advocate one last time, though. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> This is usually where I approach everything. But think of somebody whose name is Joe. Or like John. I mean, even John is biblical. We can say John is biblical. I have it, Stephen. I don't know. Like, all they hear is just like Amy, Emily. Like, just good old names that they grew up with. And then you come in there and you throw in Nemeka. Yeah. You know what else I would say to that is when it comes to this name thing, like sometimes I ask myself, like, what is the outcome that I want? If I meet someone and I just meet you once, honestly, I'm not really interested in whether you remember my name because honestly, I probably won't remember your name either. Like if you tell me Joe, I may remember for like five seconds and I, I, I'm so terrible <laughs> at names. That the next time I meet you, I'm not going to remember that you told me your name was Joe. So like, I just ask myself, like, what is the outcome that I desire? If I am working with you, then, you know, I want you to actually know my name. So I might, you know, I might actually take my time in that first or second encounter to break it down for you in syllables, like Tosin, you know, make it simple for you. But if I miss you once, it's Tosin. And I'm going to segue into something else because I don't want to waste one minute of my time explaining to you when I'm never going to meet you again. Because here is the reality. We are living in this country and... As much as Nigerian community is growing in the U.S., like we are still, so, we are still like a minority. So the tr- honest truth is that you know I may be the only person that someone has met. You might be the only emoji that that person has met. So that name is new to them. And in as much as we might say, oh, you know, they are Italian names, they are Russian names. Hey, maybe you hear it on the news. Maybe you watch some silly Russian movie where you hear about one Russian name and all that, and it doesn't. Or or you or you hear about how like the they pronounce Russian names and you sort of have an idea, but you don't have that same exposure to African names. And so you, you are just like completely thrown off and you don't know what to do. So, I mean, like we're going to have this conversation. It's like, what does it, like, what does it change tomorrow? Like, how do you continue to educate people? Like, can you change them or can you change your own self? Or 
like how do you continue to survive in this jungle so this like jungle. if i don't yeah. care i don't need to know how, how to pronounce my name like it's tossing let's move on to something else if i'm going to work with you or we're yeah. going to be like intimate in some kind of you know, like a friendship or whatever. Yeah, then I'm interested in you getting to know my name. I'm going to take time to break it down for you. And then you don't really have an excuse for why you don't know it. So. Wow. Yeah. You know, let me go ahead. Just because it's, it's interesting because I'm, as I'm listening to all these conversations, I'm realizing that, you know, there was a point where I had to, like you're saying, it's all contextual and you can't, not every single one is going to be a fight. Sometimes it's just a throwaway. I'm getting coffee. I don't care what you, whether you know my name or not. Um, but I'm realizing that as I got older, um, like I had to give myself permission to do that. And I think it's probably because of how I was raised. You know, I got here in the 80s and there was, there was, <laughs> there were no Nigerians. Here. You know what I mean? It was, we were in upstate New York. There was no other West Africans. And my mom was very, um, my mom was very much a feminist and my mom was very Afrocentric. And my mom was very much about your name means something. You know, this is your grandmother's name. This is where you're from. Your name means something. And I think when I was a kid and she saw the Americans trying to make me marry, Mary, she was very, she drilled it into me at a young age that your name means something and don't let them take that away from you. And so I think I grew up that, you know, like it, was on, it wasn't until in my 20s that I gave myself permission to let my name just be a throwaway. You know, like when I was a teenager, when I was in college, if you mispronounced my name, it was not a personal offense, but it, it, was, it was more meaningful then to me than it is now as I've gotten older and I've realized that there's different contexts and there's different, there's all just different kinds of things. But I think it also depends on like, what is your relationship to this country? You know, like what is your family's relationship to this country? Um, because for me, my mom was very much about, you know, you are an African in America and you cannot let them take that away from you. You cannot let them take your name away from you. You have to. And so I think because she thought maybe I was going to forget where I was from and I was going to become very Americanized. I think she was also very like, you have to remember your name. There was a lot put on the name. And I look at my nephews and my nieces and it's different now, you know, like it's, and I feel it's good. It's freer for them. They don't have as much tied into their name as I did, you know, and I, and I can see the generational change. So there is some, there's definitely some movement happening. There's definitely some movement happening, but it's like, I had to give myself permission to to not care, <laughs> you know, to not have to fight it. Wow. Thank you, ladies, for coming, for sharing your names and your struggles and the beauty in those, um, in the different names that you guys have. One last question before I let you guys go. Um, what would, what advice would you give someone, you know, a young child, a girl with every names, with foreign names, um, that can help them just feel better, you know, where their names, bolder let them stand upright and just own their own names what advice will you give so i think the first thing i'll say is own your name be proud of your name know the meaning of your name if you're like an american with a yoruba name or you know an african name and you were born in america go and figure out the meaning of your name because it matters it actually is the pride right that's one thing that we've talked about that i think is very important for us is our names mean something and if you're like a true African person who like really gets sentimental about this thing, go and figure out the meaning of your name and own it with pride because those names usually mean something. And if you think about all the people that took their time thinking about what they were going to name you, they were thinking about what sounded really good, but they were also thinking about the essence of your existence in their lives. And that's why our names mean something because we were literally gifted to these humans who appreciated us in some way and used that feeling, that emotion that they were feeling at that time to place a name on us so that every time they voiced our names, it literally would stir up something in them. And I, I absolutely love that about the names that we've been given, right? So that's my first thing is be proud and own your name. Secondly, Everyone has different goals in this life. This is America. You're black. Pick your battles. Yeah. <laughs> there are going right. to be some days where you're going to be like, yo, I can't. You know, if you're going to be Kia today, you're going to be Kia today. And one of those places where I pick my battles is Starbucks. Yeah. I got things to do. All right. So my name is Kia at Starbucks. <laughs> um, if you're going to be giving a presentation and you feel like that's the place where you want to, like, <laughs> you know, stick by your name and stick by your name. You know, I don't put nicknames in my presentations because my name is Quinsala Dalja. That's just it. That's just the way it is. Pick your battles. Especially if you have like financial or professional aspirations. When you get to the top, 
then you can kind of do whatever the heck you want. But on that journey up, yeah, sometimes you just got to let, you have to let something slide. That's all I got. Thank you. Yeah. And the, that's actually a perfect segue into what I was thinking is in, 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 on that journey to the full ownership, right? Because it's, if, so if, if, if you're in the position where if you're the one granting somebody a loan or granting somebody a grant or whatever the case may be, trust me, they will learn how to say your name. They will Google it. They will find a way. They will say your name. So <laughs> until that day on your way there, I think it's important to remind yourself as well as others that your name is enough. And this is along the lines of resisting the urge to say, like you said, to explain or over explain. Right. And for me, how I practice it, and I'm still trying to practice it is when I say my name, Muji automatically, you know, obviously needs for assimilation, right? If I'm talking to a Nigerian, it comes up easy as Muji or if I'm over to an African, if I'm talking to a non-African, it becomes Moji. So I'm constantly practicing and reminding myself, Moji is enough. I say Moji on a good day. Moji rolls easily. Moji is what I know. How come all of a sudden, depending on who's in front of me, I start twisting my tongue on my name again. I'm already twisting my tongue trying to pronounce words. English is not our first language, let's right. be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of us, really, yeah, we all grew up with English, but... I don't know about you guys, but when you're thinking and when you're communicating, like certain things just communicate differently in your head. So why am I then changing moji to moji when I'm talking to other people? So I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, constantly reminding ourselves that our names especially are enough. And I think it's a way of, you know, honoring all those people that Koinsela mentioned who took their time to give us our names or it was, for example, our last names. Like my aunt has this habit. My last name is Akinde and Akinde, Akinde the warrior has come or, you know, that's, I, that's what Akin means. And anytime, say, I post something on Facebook and I'm like complaining about having a hard day or whatever, she comes into my comments and she goes, I'm walking, there's nothing. So I'm walking, child of a warrior. Like, so when you hear things like that, right? You're yeah. having a bad day, you're bad. and somebody reminds you of your name or your Oriki, and it's like, I'm walking, bro, hell yeah, I can yeah, do I'm the whatever it is. Of a warrior, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Warrior, let's go, you know. <laughs> yeah. But that split second, you're back to, you know what, my name, my prophecy, let me honor it. So it's, it's a journey because when, we're a minority, right? Like we've established, we're a minority. We're being bombarded by all of these things that tell us we're not enough, that we're invisible, that we're disposable, all of these things. It's a fight. Some days you have it, some days you don't. But I think if we try to be a little bit more conscious of the little things, for me, the small battle I'm taking to myself is my pronunciation. The way I say it, the way you say it, mm -hmm. I can't control you, but mm -hmm. the way I say it, that's what I'm taking with me as it's Moji. Moji. And then we'll use all the emoji and whatever, <laughs> whatever other ways to do it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like the advice that you gave of just, you know, um, don't apologize. You know, my advice to somebody who has a different name, you know, my, my, my main advice to that person would be just be joyful. Just be joyful. Because what that does is, um, is it cuts down on all of that uh, anxiety and passive aggressiveness and, and, and social anxiety that happens when you're about to step into a room and you're not sure how to pronounce your name. Um, I just say, just be joyful because like you say, it's going to be, there's different contexts. There's some times where you just want to say your name and move on. There's other times where you actually want to say and explain what it means because they might think it's beautiful and you want to have an interaction with them and share something. Other times you're just not in the mood and you just want to move on with your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but however you do it, you know, it's, it's, it's just understand that, yes, your name isn't going to be Jessica and Jill and Mary. It's just, it's not. And we are not, this is the moment in time that we're in. We're not a hundred years from now where there's more Nigerian names and people are used to them. Exactly. Like, this is the moment, <laughs> yeah. This is the moment in time we're in. We're very fertile people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know just be joyful if they mispronounce it it doesn't have to be an anger thing 
You know, you understand where what the moment in time is. You understand you have a different name in America. You understand if 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 they want to exoticize you, just be joyful about that as well. You know, so I, that's what I just say to all, anyone with a foreign name is just just approach it with joy, <laughs> and because it's because it's one of those things that it's 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 a metaphor for so many other kinds of microaggressions that you're going to in, encounter in your life. You know, and if this is the one thing that you are going to hit it over and over and over and over again. So how do you respond to this one little microaggression? That's how you are going to respond to all the other ones, you know? So just approach it with joy, you know, laugh if they mess for not. Just, just be joyful about it because <laughs> it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. So just, just approach it with joy and, and let it roll off your back. So see to you. Yeah. Okay. So I guess my advice to anyone would be just like, be proud of your heritage, be proud of where you are from, be proud of what that name means because it means something. And like, just be a good ambassador for it. Like do it for all the toasts out there. All the <laughs> <out there>. <laughs> <laughs> like, go for what you want. They will learn how to say your name. Like, if you are killing it, you are doing the things that you want to do. Like pe- people learn how to say Chimamanda. Like they will learn your yes, name. Uh-huh. They don't call it Shade. They call it Shade. Everybody knows that it's Shade Adu. Yeah. Everybody knows. Like yes. just do your thing. They will conform. People will learn. So yeah. That's wow, okay. wow, wow. Thank you ladies so much for coming to rant with me today. I really <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you for coming. Um well, this is the end of the episode. I, I hope when I call you guys, you will answer my humble call. But yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. You guys enjoyed it. Re- Sorry? Yeah, it was great. It was, oh. great. it was great to sound it out and hear everyone else's perspective. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank Not you. Not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Special shout out to Eric at Quincy Street Studios. Thank you for making me look fabulous and making this sound good. To you for listening. Thank you. Appreciate you. Until next time, whatever it is you want to do, whoever it is you want to be, all you have to do is just start. Remain blessed. <laughs> <laughs>